Hi everybody, I'm Dave McCann with Blaine Fowler. This is a True Blue Extra, which is a growing worldwide phenomena <laughs> yeah. that we're happy to be a part of. We had two views we had last week. Let's talk about, uh, we probably had more than two. I hope we had more Because I than watched two. it, I was one. <laughs> uh, let's talk about why the Cougars aren't hitting in practice as much. What's the deal? Yeah, Broncos got a veteran team this year. And with as many seniors as they have, and as many positions where they know who the starter is, he feels like he's got to have some kind of balance where they get their timing down but they eliminate as many injuries as they possibly can. Well, does that impact the uh, tenacity coming out of the gate? I don't, guys like Kyle Van Noy, and he just barely got, you know, he's hoping to get cleared to be able to play this week in terms of go to contact. But guys like Kyle Van Noy, he doesn't need to hit in fall camp to be able to hit. I mean, you know that guy can right. hit. Yeah, and, but they're not everyone's Kyle. Yeah, not everybody's Kyle Van Noy. And so th they will have some hitting as the camp progresses, and then it'll taper down as they get into game week against Washington State. But I think early on, Broncos trying to get as many reps for these guys and get as many timing things done and clean things up before he subjects these guys to pounding on one another and risk injury. And you know, already the offensive line has struggled with some little nagging yeah. things, and they've had you know, rotating guys through there. Riley Nelson was complaining this weekend that, gosh, you'd like to see the starting five out there all together to start getting their timing down. And so keeping healthy and getting enough work in terms of the physical work is a very fine balance right now. They're going to scrimmage again on Thursday. One thing we saw in last week's scrimmage, and they'll hit a little bit on mm -hmm. Thursday, was that the emergence of the running backs. Uh, Yona Pritchard looks like a stud. He's a tank. But, but uh, Jamal Williams kind of, everyone wants to see the fast guy. Well, he's a fast guy and uh, a true freshman. How much do you think he'll see? Uh, game playing. I, I think it depends on how well he picks up pass protection because yeah. they certainly can throw him in in the run game right now and they're really impressed with his ability to make people miss and, and I mean to tell you this kid worked hard this summer here in Provo did extra work in the afternoons every day he is ready to play physically and mentally he's ready to play the hardest part for a running back is the protection packages and blocking schemes so if he's gonna be an every down kind of a back like a Michael Lisa where they can spell him for extended periods he's gonna be able to have to be able to pick up the calls you know listen to the offensive lineman and make the right pass protection that's the hardest part because he's got the part if you just give him the football and say hey run over there he's gonna be great at that and how much playing time he gets will depend on how quickly he can pick up protection packages if the kicker, Justin Sorensen, doesn't come back healthy, um, and, and he hasn't kicked yet in camp, mm -hmm. uh, and you get into the ball game, and you have Riley Stevenson as the backup, but does that mean unless you get inside your 30 or 25-yard line, you're going to go for it on fourth down? He, he has decent range. Stevenson has decent range. Um, he just doesn't quite have as much pop when... Um, when Justin is healthy, he doesn't have quite as much pop for those deep, deep field goals. But, I mean, he would be adequate. The, the thing that you hate, though, is you hate to have him have to do everything. Because is that going to take away from Stevenson's punting prowess? Right. And, I mean, he was the story in the bowl game, mm -hmm. down at the Armed Forces Bowl. Yeah. His ability to pin uh, Tulsa deep time after time and create short fields for BYU was a big deal. So you don't want to have to have him do anything that takes away from his ability to punt the football you know, effectively, and if it if that's too much for him, then that's not a good thing. You, you need to have Justin Sorensen healthy. All right, when do players hit the wall in camp? Now we're two weeks from Thursday is the biggest night of their lives uh, with Washington State. They'll have a few practices in between. Is this the next few days, the time where you just you're in the grind, and then all of a sudden you see the light at the end of the tunnel? I, th I think the end of this week, when you start to do game prep and they start throwing some Washington State stuff in, that's when it starts to get fun. But usually at this point in camp, you're saying, oh, I'm just so tired of hitting my own guys. Well, Broncos held them back from hitting too much. It's yeah. almost been like an NFL camp up to this point. And so they shouldn't be worn out from pounding on each other because they haven't had a lot of um, big-time contact in practice thus far. And then you could say, hey, man up. You're a football player. Exactly. This is what you're doing. Go out there and hit somebody. All right, we're getting closer. For Blaine Fowler, I'm Dave McCann. This has been a True Blue Extra. We'll see you on BYU TV. Thank <laughs> you.